Hi guys, it's Sunday. As you can tell from the state of my voice, um, I'm a little bit under the weather. It's all just a ploy to like seduce you in this video. I, um, there's been like a kind of cold going around at work and I thought that I could escape it, but I was not successful. Um, normally, like I would already be almost at the end of vlogging um, in order to upload either today or tomorrow, like Sunday or Monday. But with the state of like how I've been over the past few days, um, and also just like mixed with a heavy, heavy workload, um, it looks like like there will be no vlog being uploaded this Monday for last week. Like I'm gonna start a new one now. So in a week from now, there will be a new vlog, which will be this one. Does that make any sense? I tried to put on some bronzer <clears throat> in the attempt to um, come to you in my most glamorous state ever. Yeah, so those are the vibes. So basically, when I wasn't vlogging, I was resting, um, we were watching TV, um, and I finished um, The Lost Daughter by Elena Ferrante. So maybe once I find a better setup than this, because my arm will li like my arm is balancing on my knee. I really need to get one of those little tripods. That will be my next booktube upgrade. I will find a more comfortable situation and then chat with you about The Lost Daughter because um, I loved it and I have a lot to say. Okay, this should, this is a bit better. Although I feel like I look blue. Maybe I can fix that in the editing or something. But let me grab the book and let's talk. Okay, probably coffee is not the best possible thing, but you know, I still have to be a person moving through the world, so I need that. Let's talk this lovely piece of work. I loved this book so much. There's a time and place for everything, right? Like sometimes things just don't work for you or um, or something that you might really not like, you pick up at a certain time in your life and it just really speaks to you. And this was just a situation where reading this fell at the perfect time. I feel like I'm a bit late to the Ferrante party, um, but I'm actually glad that, you know, at 25, I'm doing this booktube thing and I'm, you know, I've, I had heard of My Brilliant Friend by Ferrante, like, pre-booktube. I didn't really encounter people who spoke of Ferrante in such a um, complimentary way which of course piqued my interest in her. So I'm glad that this, like my first experience reading her um, was at this point in my life when, yeah, I feel like a mature reader, um, at least the most mature that I've been so far. Also, Alex from uh, What Page Are You On? He did like this amazing fucking masterclass <laughs> video on like reviewing books and how to review books or just his thoughts on reviewing books, especially on booktube as a focus. And he said that he thinks it's important to in include some kind of um, synopsis or just, yeah, like what what is going on here so that the person watching can decide from that blurb um, that you give if this interests them, if they want to feel like listening to you talk about it. So we're following Leda, who is almost in her 50s. She's a middle-aged divorcee devoted to her work as an English teacher and to her two children. She has two daughters and she gets a divorce from her husband and the daughters decide to move to Canada to be with their dad. And she's sort of like anticipating this period of loneliness and loss of not having them around, but actually she feels liberated and she feels like almost excited to find herself again as a woman in the world without being in direct contact with her daughters. She decides to take a holiday by the sea in this small coastal town 
in southern Italy, and then she encounters a um, Neapolitan, big, big family, rowdy, loud, kind of disruptive, um, a bit sort of taking ownership over the beach. And specifically within this family, there's Nina, who's a mother of Elena, who's a, the daughter. And she's looking kind of in on this family and specifically this dynamic between Nina and her daughter. And this kind of peeks inside her some sort of disruption. Like it annoys her, she's intrigued, but it makes her um, uncomfortable and anxious. First of all, CJ, this is a DWM book. This is a depressed woman moving through the world. So we love that, firstly. I found the opening chapter um, basically she's driving and she kind of like forgets that she's driving almost and like sort of falls asleep or like enters some kind of memory or dream like something and she crashes the car. And this image that she sees while she's driving is her mother telling her that there's a red flag in the water and she shouldn't go swimming because she could drown. And I just thought that this like the origin of this like red flag of kind of danger in this sort of serene water is an amazing opening for this book and I feel like it continues to sort of permeate the story. This book is full of dog ears, um, underlines. Ferrante's writing is very, very nuanced and sharp and daring. I feel like it's very, very, very beautiful and raw. I thought of a different word that wasn't raw, um, and I can't remember what it was. <laughs> it's truly a woman's inner dialogue. Of course, I took some notes. This book for me is a lot about motherhood, and specifically through the lens that maybe sometimes you lose autonomy when you become a parent and she says that she starts to see and feel and sense the world through her daughter's eyes. And she feels as if she loses her sense of identity as a singular person. So it's a lot about, you know, the identity of being a mother when your children aren't present and that maybe that's a relief to you and maybe it freeze something. Love and wanting to be close and wanting to have a bond and having a bond. At the same time, those things come with resentment, need for distance from both parties, and also just maybe the loss of freedom in in ways. She, she's sort of grappling with this feeling like her daughters can be in Canada, like across the world, but she can still be like blamed and she's still like available to be blamed for their rages. You know, that she can talk to them on the on the phone and and they can just blame her for everything, even though she's not at all present. I also thought there was a really interesting dissection of like the mother's gaze, spe specifically between mothers to each other. And, like what is a good mother and what is a bad mother? Like, yeah, quote unquote bad mother. What 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 is that? Does being a good mother mean you fully sacrifice yourself and your needs and your what you're magnetized to as an individual as a parent? It becomes clear later in the book that for a period of a few years she abandons the kids. She wants to leave her husband, and she wants to leave her kids, and she wants to... She feels she needs to find herself, and so she leaves them. And that is, as society would feel about that, or look at that, as a bad mother move. So she's, like, dealing with, you know, when she has a few, um, interactions with this other Neapolitan family like ends up sort of oversharing um, in a sense that like I think she wants to be seen and understood by this other young mother but at the same time she almost uses it as ammunition and kind of receiving um, those sort of how could you do that how could you leave your kids kind of 
um, looks and reactions from others, from other moms and also expecting moms. There's a, a pregnant woman in the book and I think Leda also sometimes wants to shake her perfect view of motherhood and she's maybe threatened by she's threatened in general by the image of good moms this was sort of my feeling there's a lot of looking in and judging each other um, looking in on other people's lives and judging choices the other things i wrote like i said this already like autonomy as a mother or a parent love, identity, the clash between your identity as a parent versus your identity as yourself. And you can't separate being, you know, a mother from who you are, but there are some times when, as a human being, you want for a second not for that always to be connected, and that's what this character is also dealing with. I thought this was just such an interesting, vivid portrait of a mother-child relationship. You know, she sees this other <clears throat> mother, Nina, and her daughter, and they have this doll. Kind of like the book sort of takes off um, when there's an incident that the doll gets lost slash stolen. And Leda is like per viewing this mother and daughter and doll kind of trio and how watching the kid hold the doll is like the image, is like a premonition of a, a woman becoming a mother and like that that's a woman's role. She reflects on her own relationship with her two daughters and how she gave her, you know, daughter a doll and she hated it and she drew all over it and she kind of defaced something that was special to her. And then she's seeing this other family, and they just seem like this perfect, loving mother-daughter bond that's just overflowing with, you know, connection. And it really threatens and shakes something inside our main character. That This is one of the strongest short novels I've ever read. It's like 130, it's 140 pages. I don't know if that's considered a novella. I really thought it was brilliant. Also, Rebecca from Rebecca Eats Books just made an amazing video on mothering. She has this like ability that I can like have my TBR ready for me, things that I know that I'm going to read next. And then this girl puts out a video and I'm like, oh great, like I'm throwing everything away and like I've got to just read everything on this list right now. So anyway, she just made a video about m books that deal with um, being a mother, not being a mother, and being mothered. So I definitely recommend, and I feel like within my scope of what I've read, this falls, this would fall into my version of that video. Daring and honest and delicate and nuanced at the same time, I just thought that this was a, a, such, such, such a good one. <laughs> And it's also, you know, really interesting for me um, to read from a mother's perspective, a female's perspective, because I'm neither of those things. And of course, I can feel like I relate. Um, and it's, you know, accessible for everyone. I thought it was just really powerful to be inside this woman's um, thoughts and struggles and inner dialogue for 140 pages. It's really a character piece, um, which I just loved. I feel like I'm starting to feel a little bit better. Um, it's all in the mindset, you know. And while we're here, I'll just update you on um, what I'm reading now. I feel like this vlog is probably gonna be a lot of me sitting down and talking to you. I don't know how much it's gonna be like fun clips from life. I started reading Freshwater by Kweke Amezi. I'm doing a buddy read with my one of my best friends. Um, so yeah, we're really, we're, we're already sending messages back and forth about this. And I think it will be a really, really interesting video to sit down and make together and unpack our thoughts on this. So Kweke Amezi 
is a non-binary Nigerian born and I think London based author. I've just started it. I've, I'm on chapter three. I don't want to say too much about this now other than 20 pages in, I'm in complete awe. I know CJ talked about this book and Iggy from Literary Iggy talked about this book and she's the one that was like, listen, this is on my top books of the year already. It's incredible. We're following a story of Ada or Ada. She's born to parents Saul and Sachi. And at least the first section is from the perspective of we, which is the kind of spirits, which I think are derived from Nigerian mythology or folklore. Specifically, I think it comes a lot from Igbo culture. I'm doing a lot of Googling and um, about this uh, meta-ethnicity of Nigeria and just so fascinating that this is blending in kind of spiritual mythology folklore vibes. We're from the perspective of we, which is these different spirits that are kind of shoved into the body of Ada as she's being born. What I'm getting is an exploration of a character that can contain multiple selves and multiple identities inside one body. As a person who um, questioned a lot my gender identity and still I question myself and you know, aspects of my ident identity that like are related to gender. Those are things that I still like deal with and question in myself. So to read something that deals with or just explores in a way that I could never put into words, the we that can exist inside a person, I can super relate to. Like I 100, do I feel a we inside me? Yes. That is so, so interesting very moving and very important, um, at least for me to read, because I can really relate. The prose is extremely poetic. If you like On Earth, We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vuong, then you would like the, this kind of writing, I think. The word that comes to my mind is fleshy. The words are fleshy. They're, they're sensational. I feel like I can just ramble on about this, um, but I'm gonna keep reading. And I think that this book is broken up into different perspectives, like from the we, from these two selves, Asugara, I hope I'm gonna figure out how to say that, and St. Vincent, which are like kind of um, two selves that kind of crystallize inside this character. So we're getting different um, perspectives. At one point, the book becomes from the perspective of one of the selves, and then it goes back to the we. So we're jumping around from all the different corners of this character's identity. I just think that's fucking brilliant. So I'm really, really excited, and I feel like I'll have a lot to say and reflect on um, with this book. And Maya and I will sit down and we'll talk about it together. Okay, that's it for now. I'm gonna do some tidying. I feel like a clean space is a clean mind, is a clean, healthy body. And um, yeah, talk to you later. So Ohada and I have mostly the same taste in food, but there is one thing that he really doesn't like, which is ramen which ramen speaks to my soul. Because I'm feeling a little bit sick, I ordered um, ramen. And they give you like all the stuff and then you need to cook it at home and it gives you directions, um, which I think for delivery is actually nice because it's terrible to like order a noodle soup and the noodles come and they're like completely soggy. Something like hot and a little bit spicy, I think will do me good. I'm taking this off. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 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 
Baby, would you like to come tell us what this is? This beautiful aperitivo? Aperitivo? Um, I put together a cheese that I later realized is actually cashew cheese, but... Coconut cheese. Cashew cheese. Oh, cashew cheese. And, but it's so good, it tastes like, uh... Bozen. Yeah. Bozen. Okay. Pardon my France. And yeah, and I, I mixed it with some nectarines and this concentrated this balsamic. Uh, balsamic. Hi guys, um, it is Thursday. A um, few things to say. One is that I woke up this morning with no voice and a pretty like just ugh, icky throat. Um, so I'm coming to you from my alter ego voice, this vlog. This is what we're dealing with. So I'm gonna talk softly and be sensitive to my vocal cords because um, these vlogs are basically going through my whole week, um, like with my reading, but also just with life moments. I thought that I should um, take a moment and explain why this vlog is lacking content and also yeah i'm just i'm i'm projecting forward i'm not sure what this vlog is going to really consist of because obviously um everyone is following it on social media and the news um about the situation happening between israel and gaza and east jerusalem obviously or maybe not obviously depending on how much you know about me or how many videos you've seen of mine um, but I'm based in Tel Aviv. Um, so yeah, I'm here. I'm in it. If you watch the latest clip, um, of like the little aperitivo dish that Ohad made, as I was filming it, you can hear, I think in the last few seconds of that, if you pay attention, you can hear the sound of a bomb siren. So obviously I ended that clip and, uh, we went to a safe space. Yeah, because of the very, very tense and violent situation, um, like I'm not vlogging this week very much and also not reading very much this week because I just don't have, I'm just not there. It's a very um, shaking time. Anyway, I'm not sure where the rest of this vlog is going to go. Um, I may not even have a voice by the end of it. Yeah, just a little update for you, and I'll catch you when I catch you. Let it cook, baby. 